Hello everyone, I'm Nikita and you're watching BMC Global Live Health World in association with Al Hilal Hospital Bahrain. So the topic for today's talk is lasers in dermatology. We will be going through what a laser is, how beneficial it is and mainly the application of laser technology in hair reduction. So let me welcome Dr. Evangeline Singh Nalapalli to our show. With over 11 years of experience, she is currently working as a dermatologist in Al Hilal Hospital, Manama. She completed her MBBS and MD from Christian Medical College and Hospital in Bellur, Tamil Nadu, India. So, hello doctor, how are you? Hello Nikita, I am fine. So doctor, uh, the topic for today is lasers in dermatology. So to begin with, let's start with, can you tell something about the evolution of lasers in dermatology, how it began? So today I'll be talking about lasers and how they have come in use in medicine. So lasers have been in use over the last four decades, but in the last two decades, we have seen a lot of advances in laser. As early as 1963, Leon Goldman, also known as the father of lasers in medicine, was the first one to use laser in dermatology. Laser is an acronym and it was coined by a physicist Gordon Gold and it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. As you told, there are some recent advances in laser technology. So can you mention some of them? So in the olden times, the technology was something called the continuous wave lasers, mm -hmm. where there was a constant beam of laser with very long emission durations. And then came the quasi continuous wave lasers, where there were shorter durations of the laser beam. And then came the pulsed lasers, where there were still shorter duration of pulses with long intervening periods between the pulses and then the picosecond lasers with ultra short pulse durations. Okay doctor, let's start from the basic thing like what are some properties of this laser? So I'll be discussing few properties which make the laser so very distinctive and different from the torchlight that we normally use. So why is laser beam so different and what makes it so special? The first thing is that it is monochromatic, which means that the laser beam is of a single energy and wavelength and very specific too. Then it is collimated, which means that the laser beam is parallel. And then it is coherent, which means that the laser beam is in phase. So all these properties allow us for better focusing into the target tissue without damaging the surrounding tissues. Uh, there must be like different kinds of laser technologies that the uh, dermatologists they use. So can you mention what do you, what kind of technologies you use? So lasers are used in different fields and there are a lot of applications for lasers. For example, it is used in the treatment of vascular lesions like the leg veins, which are known as the spider veins, varicose veins, then the thin facial veins also known as telangiectasias. It is used in tattoo removal, treatment of acne scars and wrinkles. It is also used in treatment of nail disorders, skin rejuvenation, and of course, treatment of unwanted hair. Now, there are different lasers that are used for hair reduction. So, we have the ruby laser and the alexandrite laser, which is used in patients with light skin color. And then the diode and the NDAG laser, which can be used in people even with darker skin tones. And then the intense pulse light, which is not a laser, it is a broadband light source. And this also is used to treat various skin conditions as well as hair reduction. Okay, doctor, you told about NDAG laser. So can you just tell something more about that? Yeah, so NDAG stands for neodymium doped yttrium aluminium garnet. It's a crystal. Mm -hmm. And neodymium is the ion which provides the laser activity in this crystal. So the NDAG laser has, uh, has a long wavelength, 1064 nanometers, and at this wavelength, it helps to penetrate the deeper structures in the skin, known as into the dermis, and this effectively targets the specific tissue to bring about the specific changes. Doctor, uh, what is this NDAG laser? What's the principle of that? So the principle of NDAG laser is known as selective photothermalysis which means that it is a site specific thermal energy induced microscopic destruction of tissues after they absorb the laser radiation. And uh, this is selective because it only targets the tissue where we need to see the effect without bringing major damage to the surrounding tissue. 
Okay, doctor. So there might be many people who are interested in using this laser treatment for hair removal or hair reduction. So according to dermatologists, who are the perfect candidates for this treatment? So for the use of NDI laser, the ideal candidate will be one with light skin color and dark terminal hair because pigment melanin is necessary for the laser to act. So people who have lighter skin tones with dark terminal hair will be the ideal candidates for the laser. Doctor, uh, chromophores are important for this procedure, right? So according to you, like, what is a chromophore and why is it important in this procedure? So chromophore is a material which is present either within our body or outside our body. And the presence of the chromophore is essential for the laser to act. So chromophore, which is inside our body and specifically when we are talking about hair reduction, it is a pigment known as melanin. Mm -hmm. Now, melanin is of two types. We have the eumelanin and the pheomelanin. Eumelanin is the darker color pigment. It may be either dark brown or black and pheomelanin is yellow or red in color. So the darker the color, the better it is for absorption of the laser beam. Hence, as I told earlier, people with light skin color and dark hair will be the ideal candidates because the melanin is more in the hair and less in the skin. So it will get absorbed, the melanin in the hair will absorb the laser and bring about the desired effects. Okay, doctor, so are these two kinds of melanin found in everyone? Yes, they are found in everyone, but it will be in different uh, proportions and that is why some people have blonde hair and uh, we see that laser will not be effective in blonde hair because it needs melanin for, for the laser to act. So more melanin is preferable? Yes. Doctor, also we know, uh, talking about the hair, it from, for us from the outside it looks like very simple, but definitely there's something more to it than just being a strand. So can you tell about the structure and how it influences in this procedure? So let us briefly look about uh, the hair structure. So it is divided into the shaft which is seen on the surface of the skin. And the one that is below the surface of the skin is known as the root. And then we have the lowest part which is known as the bulb. So the hair arises from a sac which is known as the hair follicle. And below the bulb is something called the dermal papilla where there, are, where there is a lot of vasculature or blood vessels are there. And this helps to provide nourishment for the growing hair. And then there is something called the hair bulge where the stem cells are present which are the immature cells. And later on, during the process of the hair growth, the cells from the bulge move to the hair bulb matrix region where they divide and give rise to the new hair. So the melanin which is important for hair reduction as I discussed earlier is found in high concentration in the shaft, it is also in the root and it is in the hair bulb matrix area. But the dermal papilla and the hair bulge do not have melanin. So when the laser beam is directed on the skin, the melanin which is present in the hair root will absorb the laser beam and this light energy gets converted to heat energy which diffuses and heats up the surrounding follicular structures, also heats up the dermal papilla and the bulge where the stem cells are present and causes the destruction. So the light energy absorbed by the hair root gets transferred to the other parts of the hair, brings about the destruction and this is how hair reduction is brought about. If it was to con uh, compare the different kinds of laser in terms of depth of penetration, how would you put it? Uh, comparison between the different types of laser based on the depth of penetration, we see that the IPL does not penetrate as deep, then comes a diode laser and then of course the NDAG laser which penetrates 5 mm to 7 mm depth into the dermis which are the deeper structures of the skin and this is where it targets the hair bulb where a lot of melanin is there in the matrix which absorbs the light energy which eventually gets converted to the heat. Okay, doctor, does the hair growth cycle affect this treatment? If yes, and how? Yeah, so hair growth cycle also plays a big role in hair reduction by laser. So let us see the different stages of hair growth. The first is the anagen phase, which is the active phase or the growing phase of the hair. In this phase, the hair root is thicker, the concentration of melanin is also very high, and the hair gets a rich supply of blood because it's in the growing phase. But the catagen phase and the telogen phase 
it is not in the growing phase and the melanin concentration is also very less so anagen phase is the phase where the laser beam is more effective because of increased concentration of melanin and it is interesting to note that all the follicles in the body are not in the same phase of growth cycle at the same time so some hair follicles may be in the anagen phase some in the catagen some in the telogen phase but laser will affect only the hair which is in the anagen phase so this explains why multiple treatment sessions are needed for laser and in one session we will not get the desired effects because each session will target the hair which is in the anagen phase um, doctor so how many sessions will a person require for this treatment yeah that's an interesting question as i just mentioned that the, the hair which is in the anagen phase is more susceptible to the laser uh, treatment uh, at the end of each treatment maybe 10 to 20% hair reduction may be noted and at least 8 to 12 treatment sessions may be needed initially with an intervening gap of 4 to 6 weeks and later on the hair that grows may be thinner finer and lighter in color and based on the hair the treatment sessions may be reduced to once in 6 months or so doctor can you mention some contraindications of this treatment so the contraindications for laser treatment are uh, age of an individual less than 15 years pregnancy immunosuppression any disorders which make the person sensitive to light there is a disorder called systemic lupus erythematosus or sle with the person is extremely sensitive to light if a person is taking medications like minocycline or isotretinoin it will make them more sensitive to light so we need to avoid laser in such individuals also people who have certain skin conditions like psoriasis lichen planus and vitiligo we need to be careful there are some individuals who have keloids which are abnormal thick scars so again we need to be extremely careful in using the laser and the settings have to be adjusted very carefully and uh, it is also a better to avoid if there is any active bacterial infection at the site of treatment or any herpes simplex viral infection ongoing at the site of treatment doctor before an individual approaches for this kind of treatment what are some pre procedure requirements that he or she should ensure so before the procedure we first uh, talk to the person concerned and discuss about the laser and uh, make sure that he or she understands what the whole procedure is and then once the person has understood we obtain a written consent and certain things they need to keep in mind first and foremost that they should avoid plucking or waxing because in doing so the hair roots get damaged and we need the hair root because we know now that the melanin is rich in the hair root and so the effect of the treatment will depend only on that then we also tell them to avoid bleaching at least 6 weeks prior to laser because uh, we need to preserve the pigment which is melanin for the laser to work better then we tell them to avoid swimming or sunbathing or doing any outdoor activities which may make the skin tanned because once the skin is tanned the side effects after the laser may be more in terms of getting burns and pigmentation after the laser treatment doctor please can you explain the laser treatment procedure so during the procedure the patient is made to lie down comfortably and we give a protective eyewear to the patient as well as the person doing the laser needs to wear the protective eyewear and then uh, we make sure that we clean the surface to remove any oil or makeup uh, uh, lubricant gel may be applied on the treatment area uh, local anesthetic gel also may be used to reduce the pain but it is not always needed to do so and the patients usually describe uh, that it's not a very severe pain they feel like snapping of a rubber band against the skin and soon after the procedure we may note some perifollicular edema or erythema which just means slight swelling and redness on the treatment area which is very much expected and um, then we clean off the lubricant gel and we can apply a moisturizer on the treated area okay doctor just like the pre procedure requirements definitely an individual should take care after the procedure also so what are some do's and don'ts that an individual should ensure after the procedure so after the procedure one must remember that they have to be gentle with the skin and especially the area that has been treated so we tell them not to avoid swimming in uh, chlorinated water as it may irritate the skin we also uh, tell them not to use perfume products so that it does not irritate the skin they can use a sunscreen a light moisturizer 
and uh, if they note any signs of infection like redness or uh, any burning sensation they can consult the doctor usually a moisturizer is advised or if there is any signs of infection then an antibacterial cream is advised sometimes they can be reactivation of a viral infection which is known as the herpes simplex virus in that case they need to contact a physician for the proper treatment and management doctor just like a coin is having two sides keeping aside the advantages of this treatment are there any risk factors associated with this so the complications that can arise after a laser, laser treatment are uh, as follow they can be some pain redness they can be some itching and people may have a burning sensation sometimes there may be blisters and burns which may be superficial and uh, they can be managed with topical antibacterial creams and some people also note some red bumps on the skin which is known as folliculitis and that again can be treated with a an, with an antibacterial cream uh, doctor what are the factors that influence this outcome of the treatment so as we have seen in detail how laser works and who are the ideal candidates for laser there are a few factors that definitely influence the outcome first the type of the skin as we have seen that people who have lighter skin tones and dark terminal hair respond better to laser treatment then also it depends on the stage of the growth cycle as we have seen hair in the anagen phase are more responsive to the laser treatment it also depends on the type of the laser and it depends if the person has any underlying hormonal issues and it also depends on the site of the laser treatment like hair in certain areas for example the underarms responds better to hair on certain other areas like the chins or the legs doctor just as a part of ending this session can you please summarize the laser treatment procedure so as we have seen that ndiac laser is an effective method for hair reduction the advantage of ndiac laser is that it can be used in individuals with darker skin tones we have to take care of the settings so as to minimize the side effects such as burns or blisters on the skin surface multiple treatment sessions are needed because all the hair will not be targeted at the same time as they are in different phases of growth and the pre operative care is very important and we need to explain to the patient in detail so that he ha- he does not have any unrealistic expectations and the post procedure care is also of utmost importance to take care of the skin and get ready for the next laser session thank you okay thank you doctor for answering our questions and sharing information this truly was an informative session with this we come to the end of our program this is me nikita signing off